Hey there. Uh, this is something of an impromptu video. Uh, normally when I've done these kind of spur of the moment uh, videos, they've been trading related. And I decided to do this yesterday, so I probably should say impromptu in like air quotes or something. About a decade ago, we um, did some work that involved huge systems of differential equations. And to speed up the calculations, we used something that's typically referred to as um, reduction of order methods. This particular work involved uh, something called the singular value decomposition, which is kind of gained in popularity uh, as machine learning has become more and more of a thing over the last you know, 10, 15 years. And I have another project coming up that's going to be kind of similar uh, in that I might want to use these techniques. So I wanted to refresh myself on um, how to code them in MATLAB and Python because we're switching more from a MATLAB uh, house to, to, to Python, so I wanted to make sure I refresh myself on that. And while MATLAB and NumPy uh, are pretty similar in the way they do things, there are enough differences in this case that it gave me a bit of a, a bit of a headache. So what I did is did a couple of little test problems and I was going to write up notes on the differences and similarities between the two just so that if I come back to this in another six months to a year when this project actually gets off the ground, I won't have to kind of re go back and relearn everything. So I just decided to basically turn this into a, a quick video, uh, just documenting the differences between the two platforms and... And yeah, uh, this is probably a little more advanced than we uh, typically do, but I just... Uh, thought I would uh, put it out there. So let's just uh, jump into it. Okay, so the general idea here is you can take any matrix, in this case I called it capital A, and decompose it into the product of three other matrices. And I think it'll become clearer as we actually work through some problems, but the nice thing about the way these matrices U, V, and Sigma are structured, uh, U and V particularly, is that the relative importance of, they're ordered such that such that the first column of U is the dominant mode, for lack of a better word. Uh, the second column is the second most important mode. Third the uh, is the third most important, and so on. Likewise for, for the matrix V. The first column is the most important, the second column the second most important. And this sigma here is a diagonal matrix, and the entries in there uh, tell you the relative strength of these modes. Again, I think this will become clearer as we work through, uh, work through an example. Now, usually NumPy and MATLAB are pretty similar in the way you'd actually code them up and the, the form that the, uh, the answers are given to you in. But uh, in this case, there's enough of a difference between the two that it's kind of annoying. So I'm just going to um, highlight a few of those and then work through a very simple, small matrix, and then we can move on to the image, uh, image compression part of this. So, if you've already calculated these matrices, to reproduce your matrix A, you just multiply U times sigma times the transpose of V. So you have to explicitly take the transpose. And that's the way the MATLAB code works. When you calculate, this is the um, SVD command in MATLAB, and I'm going to use an S instead of sigma just to save, my, save some typing. Um, it's going to return the matrix V. So if you want to reproduce A, you'd have to go and manually tell MATLAB to take the transpose of it in this product. And in MATLAB, the um, apostrophe is a, is a shorthand for transpose. Now in NumPy, um, the NumPy command is here. And I explicitly wrote this as VT to, to um, indicate transpose. It already takes the transpose for you. And now another major difference is the way it returns the singular values in this matrix sigma or S in the code. Uh, MATLAB actually returns the matrix to you, uh, which is convenient if you need to do, um, do some calculations with it out of the box, but it can be a little bit uh, memory intensive because it has to store all those, all those zeros. Now the NumPy command will just return a one-dimensional array of all the singular values. So to use it in a calculation, you have to recast it as a matrix, and you have to be careful of the shapes because uh, if it's a rectangular matrix, it's not uh, not going to be the same number. The size of the matrix is not going to be the same number of uh, elements in that, that one-dimensional array. So let's just do a quick example with a small matrix. Uh, I'm going to start in MATLAB because it's kind of the easiest to do, and then we'll uh, just reproduce it in, in NumPy. Okay, so here we are in MATLAB, and I'm just going to create a matrix uh, that looks like this. So it's just a bunch of integers. And now let's do the singular value decomposition of this. So it's uh, u comma s comma v. Maybe I should have used a for the name of the matrix rather than x, but oh well. SVD capital X. So it returns our uh, three matrices. You see u, 
V down here and our diagonal matrix sigma. And you'll notice that these entries are ordered in the um, from the most important at the top element down to the least important in the bottom element. And you notice that there's a lot of extra zeros in here. So because this matrix is not square or, or X matrix, um, neither is this matrix. So this is something you have to watch out for in NumPy um, when you try to reproduce your matrices. So I could reproduce this original X matrix. Where is it here? Just by coming down here and going U times S times V transpose. And there's our original matrix. So let's go through this same thing. Uh, well, I will use this exact same matrix. Let me copy and paste it and I will do it in in NumPy. So okay, our imports are here as normal. We're going to use the OpenCV package, uh, which is a image processing machine vision library. We'll just use it to import our image when we do the, the compression. Uh, NumPy and matplotlib to do some visualizations. Run that and let's uh, recreate that matrix here. Okay, so I've pasted the matrix in here and made some tweaks to make it uh, the Python code. Here's the, the matrix, and now let's do the SVD of that. So we're going to come down here. We're going to go U comma S comma V, and I'm going to say T just to remind ourselves that this is already transposed. And it's just NP dot linear algebra dot SVD. Okay. Make sure that runs. It does. So let's just print out the results. So let's come down here, go print U. Uh, yes, print S, print V, T. So here's, uh, let me, let me put some white spaces in between here because it's kind of, uh, hard to read. Okay, that's a little bit better. So, um, you see that this matrix for the singular values is just a, a row, row vector, a row, not even a row vector, it's a one-dimensional, um, NumPy array as opposed to the matrix here in, in uh, MATLAB. Now the U matrices are identical. Uh, let's just go down this column. It's minus 0 0.20, minus 0 0.51, um, U, here we go. So 2051, it's the exact same thing. But if you come down to the V matrix, um, you'll notice that the columns of the NumPy matrix, so what are these numbers here? Uh, Five, three, six, eight, four, seven. If you go back to uh, MATLAB, you'll notice that these are basically the rows, right? For uh, three, five, six, eight, four, seven. So the columns of our uh, NumPy, <coughs> excuse me, the columns of our NumPy matrix are the rows of our MATLAB matrix, and that's just due to the fact that again, MATLAB is automatically taking the not MATLAB, uh, NumPy is automatically taking the transpose. So yeah, and then to reproduce the original matrix in MATLAB is easy. You just do this, uh, but it's a bit of a pain in Python. Let's just quickly work through that and then, then head on to the image uh, compression. So I don't really know how to create a diagonal, um, a rectangular diagonal matrix like our S matrix here in NumPy. So one workaround for that is to use the, uh, to create a matrix of all zeros that has the same size as, as we want and then just just loop through with a for loop and put in the diagonals. So what we could do here is go for i in range uh, s dot size sigma sigma i comma i is equal to s i Let's just print sigma. Oh, what happened? Oh, I see. Um, uh, this probably has to have a d type equals float. There we go. So now you see our uh, singular values are along the diagonal here, and this matrix has the right shape. So now, in theory, um, well. Another issue with NumPy that I have is sometimes their um, matrix multiplication things are a little bit um, difficult to figure out what's actually going on with the code. So I explicitly, um, when I want matrix multiplication, I use the mat, uh, matrix multiply command. So I'm going to take uh, my matrix U, multiply it times our matrix sigma, 
And then I'm going to take this and do an np dot matrix multiply by vt. And in theory, this should give us the same matrix, our x matrix back. And yay, uh, it, it does indeed. That's something I find a little bit clunky about uh, NumPy is how it tries to recast things for you. And you sometimes just have to explicitly say in a very convoluted way um, what you want it to do. To do. Um, okay, so let's go on and do the image uh, compression thing now. Okay, so I'm going to pull in my image here. This is the uh, raw file, and I'm going to convert it to black and white just because um, singular value decompositions are pretty slow, and this will cut down the matrix size by a factor of three. So let's load those in, and let's just plot this. So let's go to plt.im show image. What did I do wrong here? Oh, nothing. So this is the image we're going to uh, play with. It's an um, image taken from Arches National Park in Utah. And I, um, the reason I am going to, I, I change it to black and white is um, print image dot shape, print image dot shape. So you notice that this is a pretty big matrix. This black and white matrix is pretty big. It's 3000 by 4000, roughly speaking. Uh, and the color one has three channels, so I would multiply this, you know, three times over. Uh, if you want to see me do this, let me know and I, I can do it. I just want to save a bit of time because, um, as I said, it's a slow process. So it's just a simple matter. Uh, USV transpose is equal to np.linelg uh, dot svd image. Let's see how long this takes to actually run. As you can see, it's not the speediest of things. So this is one of the reasons I would not use this in practice. I would do something that's a lot uh, computationally faster, like a, a Fourier transform or something like that. There we go. It's done. Let's just print out the sizes of these matrix. So print u.shape, print s.shape, and print v.transpose.shape. So you see these are pretty big matrices still. So let us t just choose a, a number of um, columns in U and rows in V transpose to keep. Let's just say that that's equal to, what should we do here? Um, let's just say 50. And so let's just say, uh, and we'll truncate our U matrix. Let's call it U trunk is equal to U. Um, we want... Well, before doing that, let's just actually plot out what this S matrix looks like. So let's go plt uh, dot plot S. Let's just make these um, dots to be a little clearer. And since there's such a huge scale here, let's make it a log scale. So instead of plt dot plot, let's make it plt semi log y. So the y axis will be on a log scale. So you can see here, our, most of our information is in these first few. I don't know how many, how many, um, how many rows this uh, corresponds to, how many columns of U this corresponds to. Not that many. Um, probably 25 to 50. Well, here's here's 250, maybe 100. Let's just change this to 100 down here. N is equal to 100, and let's build out these truncated matrices. So we want. Um, all the rows and we want columns 0 through uh, n. Let's just make sure that actually runs. Okay. Likewise uh, for V transpose. We want um, we want the first 50 rows and all the columns and this is going to be V transpose. And now we need to build out this uh, S matrix, or the sigma matrix. And I believe since we're truncating uh, the sigma matrix, uh, we don't need to do what we did with the for loop. We could just go sigma is equal to np dot diags. 
uh, the first 50 elements of S. So it is S uh, 0 to 50. And this is on the main diagonal. So let's run that, make sure it runs. Let us uh, see if the sigma comes in uh, properly. So let's go do a plt dot spy sigma. What'd I do? Uh, fingers quicker than brain. So that should work. So let us, um, let's just comment that out. And let's do um, image, what do I want to call it? I'll just call it capital I. That's going to be equal to matrix multiplication. So MP dot mate, mat, mult. That's U underscore trunk. And I'm multiplying that times S or sigma in this case, sigma. Uh, let's just make sure it runs. No, it doesn't. What did I do? Oh, this should be a, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's not a 50, it's an N. So, okay, that runs. Now let's multiply it times the V transpose matrix. So MP dot matrix multiply this guy times V transpose truncated. What the hell? Okay. Uh, close parenthesis. Does it run? Should be a capital V, right? Okay, seems to be okay. Let us uh, visualize it and see what it looks like. So, plt dot i m show capital I. Well, that doesn't look good. Um, did I get the rows and columns mixed up? V, oh, this should be a V transpose. There we go. So we were able to recreate the image basically only using the first 50, uh, 50 columns of U and the first 50 rows of V transpose. Let's us um, make that 20. Did I say 50? I meant uh, we had used only uh, 100. So now we're using 20. And you can see the image quality is not anywhere near as good as this. But still, you know, I mean, it's still recognizable. Let's go to 10. Huh. Pretty interesting. Yeah, I don't know if I'd recognize that without prior knowledge of what the uh, original image was, but I mean, we're throwing away 97% of the information in that original matrix, so cool. So I recreated the same code in MATLAB here. Uh, pull in the image, I convert it to black and white, display the image, display the original image, do the singular value decomposition. I'm going to truncate to 100 points in this uh, case here, create a new matrix called M, which is based on these truncated matrices, and then uh, plot that new uh, new truncated matrix. So let's run this and just see what it looks like. Again, this is not the speediest of things. It's supposedly running. Let's see. Come on, you can do it. Today would be nice. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. So this is the truncated image. Um, doesn't look that bad. There's some graininess to the sky here. You can see um, here's the original image. The sky looks a lot clearer. Let's see if I can put these side by side. You know, not, not too bad. Um, cool. So I'm going to call it quits here. Uh, I'm going to continue to update this notebook over time and I'll push those uh, push those changes through to GitHub. There are things I didn't cover. Um, uh, there are things like um, commands that return a subset uh, of the SVD for you, so you don't have to do that parsing of the matrices that it returns, things like that. So, um, cool. Uh, if you guys want me to do any MATLAB type videos or differences between MATLAB and Python, uh, please let me know. That was a topic I was thinking about, but really haven't decided to, to pull the trigger on it. So, until next time, see ya.